The Isle of Arran was formed as part of the volcanic process including most of the islands of the Inner Hebrides that created the North Atlantic Ocean. It is often referred to as Scotland in miniature because the Highland Boundary Fault sliced through the island over 400 million years ago, splitting the landscape into two distinct halves, separating the higher mountainous ground to the north from the pastoral farmland in the south. The mountains rise to 2,866 feet at Goat Fell. Sadly, not quite a Munro, but ground into their present shapes by wind, water and ice. Arran is reached by a car ferry from Ardrossan across the Firth of Clyde, with connecting services by train from Glasgow Central Station and rainbows, as you can see, are two a penny on the island. Goatfell is a focal point from the boat, but after disembarking, walk through the village for about a mile, and where the Glenshurik Burn meets the sea, here are better photographic views of the fell. You've now got a foreground interest. Day trippers make for Roddick Castle, now in the care of the National Trust for Scotland. Although it can be dated back to around 1200, most of what you see is 19th century, and the extensive grounds and gardens are especially attractive. The estate also includes Goat Fell, and the more energetic amongst you may like to continue up Glen Rosa for a taste of mountain scenery without too much climbing. Also, don't overlook the Aran Heritage Museum, back a bit in town. The geology of Aran is varied. Now at Cori, the rocks are of the Carboniferous period, but a bit further, because of their shape, they are tertiary. Correct me if I am wrong. And finally, Devonian. Whatever period they come from, here and elsewhere, they add important foreground patterns to distant views. Goatfell Summit is not far from Corrie, but because of higher ground and woodland, it cannot be seen from the road unless we step back to the beach. Further along the coast road, the Sanax Burn cuts through the hills to the coast, affording a glimpse up the glen. Our road continues through the hills at North Glen Sanex, but stop at the bridge for photo opportunities when the burn is in spate. Before descending to Locranza, pause at a roadside car park for the sleeping giant on the skyline, the glaciated mountain range resembling a figure at rest. Locranza is a good place for refreshment and it has a whisky distillery. There are many viewpoints from the lockshaw of the castle. It is 16th or 17th century, built on top of an earlier stone hall dating from the 13th century. Now if time, explore both sides of the lock. There is a path, the north side providing dramatic views back to the mountains and the castle. Just around the corner is Catacol. A short diversion takes us on a good path by the burn, up the glen, and into the mountains. Aran has a profusion of stone circles and burial mounds, some dating back as much as 8,000 years. Of particular note is Macri Moor Monuments, which can be accessed from the road on a good path. Effective compositions can be had by using the mountains as backdrop, which I like to think had some influence on their positioning, particularly as during the Bronze Age this was an important religious site on Arran. Rounding the southern tip of Arran at Kildonan, and before reaching Whiting Bay, we glimpse 
Elsa Craig, an isolated conical granite stump rising from the Firth of Clyde. At Whiting Bay, take a path inland for about a mile to Glen Ashdale Falls. There are a number of photographic viewpoints allowing different photo techniques. North of Whiting Bay, another path leads to the coast at King's Cross Point, the nearest stretch of coast to Holy Island, but the ferry goes from Lamlash, which you can see across the bay. Lamlash is where I often stayed when running photographic holidays for HF holidays, but sadly they let the hotel go. This afforded me the opportunity to photograph the bay at different times and seasons, a valuable luxury for any photographer given the opportunity to return on many occasions and not only for new pictures of Lamlash. One short walk I often featured was to the Clockland Hills, where superb views open up to the north over Brodick Bay to Goatfell. From Lamlash, the road can be taken back to Brodick and the boat, but not this one. On the way, a viewpoint with indicator provides us with one final look at the distant mountains before leaving.